It's no secret, Gordon Ramsay loves eggs. Eggs, come on, we all love them, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. In fact, the guy is kind of famous for making them. Time for Gordon Ramsay makes eggs. Or is it proper to call no. these scrambled eggs? Scrambled eggs. Yeah. All right. right. So I'm here to give you a masterclass on making perfect scrambled eggs. He's asked to come cook his world famous scrambled eggs all the time on TV and other media. CJ, look, look at that fluffiness. So that's, where we're, that's where we're going for. They are iconic and almost always come out looking delicious. Jimmy, relax your elbows a little bit. You're too tense. Okay. Oh, well, car. it's because you're yelling at me. <laughs> I didn't know you were this. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> It all started many years ago, but this intense viral demonstration on MasterChef received 12 million views, so I'm going to attempt to make these scrambled eggs myself. Cue the intense music. Now, scrambled eggs. First of all, obviously I don't need to show you how to grill a tomato and a mushroom, that's pretty obvious. Yeah, obviously. Kind of winged it here. I don't have any sort of grill in my small apartment, so I decided to roast them instead. We can cover that later. But the secret behind any great scrambled egg is to make sure you do not overcook it. Which I did, so on to the second attempt. Start off with cold eggs, straight in. Eggs going straight in. Everyone knows that the only way to not get bullied at cooking school is to show up knowing how to crack eggs using only one hand, and then picking out the eggshell pieces that fall in when nobody is looking. Off to a great start. You take your butter, three small knobs of butter. Three knobs of butter, whatever measurement that means. I googled it, but even the computer overlords weren't exactly sure how to define it. Going off my eyeballs, it appears that three small slices will suffice. From there, on to the stove. You bring the gas up high, and then start cooking the eggs very gently. You must be delicate with the eggs as you bring them up to high heat. You wouldn't want them to get offended. Every time I stir, I'm cleaning the bottom of the pan. Every time I stir, someone watching this is going to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, the eggs are trying to stick to the bottom of the pan, but I just won't let them. This has become personal for me, whether that be right or wrong. If we were to season the eggs now, they would go gray. As someone who loves gray eggs, this step was hard for me. So, 30 seconds on, back off. That slows down the cooking process stops the eggs from overcooking. I remove the eggs from the heat because the cooking process needs to slow down and we want them to work for it. If the eggs were given everything they asked for in life the moment they asked for it, then why would they ever learn to appreciate and know what it means to struggle? Back on. If you've overcooked it, you'll see the scrambled eggs go really watery. Whoa, let's reverse that for a second, Gordon. Those look watery. Did you overcook them? I'm not sure what to make of all of this in all honesty. Back on, by Gordon's logic, if my eggs look watery, they might be overcooked. But by my logic, if they look watery, they might be undercooked. So by that logic, I might be f So it's really important that you go on and off, on and off, throughout the whole three minutes. So they're just starting to thicken up now. I'll come back off the heat. My eggs are already starting to thicken up because I have been taking them on and off the heat when you guys aren't looking. I figured I would just spare everyone's attention spans and just keep the amount of repetition to a bare minimum. But the technique actually is pretty fun and the results were surprisingly great. Now we've cooled it down, back on to the heat again. We've cooled them down, so now we need to add them back to the heat because we are possibly sociopaths. Now, take your toast, your tomatoes, and then your mushrooms. Let's run it back for a minute here and get our tomatoes and mushrooms prepped for our breakfast plating because as of now, we don't have any of that ready to go. I'm not doing anything fancy, just going to slice these cherry tomatoes in half to make them easier to roast. And once I have everything added to a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, I'm going to add a good bit of oil and seasoning. Just a drizzle of your favorite olive oil and we are on our way to Flavor Town. I then grab all the best seasonings I could find from my shelf, such as onion powder and garlic powder. Generously season the veggies to make sure the flavor is powerful and bold like your favorite superhero or aged cheese. It's hard to go wrong with oregano or basil, so those are the two options I went with. After a pinch of salt, I got in there deep with my hands and mixed it all around to evenly coat it as best as I could. All the contrasting colors had me mesmerized and I was ready to get it into the oven to roast. I got the oven preheated to 400 degrees and just needed to transfer everything over. I then got to work and preparing some nice homemade bread to toast up. I decided I wanted to go all out, so I decided to lather both sides with butter and then toast on the stovetop instead of just half-assing it with a simple toaster, like an amateur. I figured this way I could control the level of toasting while also getting it nice and buttery like landing your first kickflip. With bread this crisp, you'd think I was the master chef, but in fact, it's still Gordon Ramsay. I was paying very close attention to the bread to make sure that all of my effort didn't go to waste and accidentally burn it. Now, take your toast. Now I take my bread that has become toast. Back off the heat, I'm working with it all the time. It's now starting to come together. 
Just see the texture now. Texture is something I'm starting to see now as I take it back off the heat. I'm working with it all the time and we have become very close. Lightly seasoned, really important, right at the very end. That keeps the eggs nice and fresh. While my eggs seem to be fresh without salt, I decided to humor Gordon and add some myself. But here's where it goes to a completely different level. Take a teaspoon of creme fraiche. Ooh. Goes in. Uh, that gives a really nice creamy texture. My eggs are on a nice level, but it's time to go Super Saiyan with some creme fraiche. The signature look of Ramsey's eggs are how creamy they are, so I don't want to disappoint him or myself. Once I added the cream, I noticed that my eggs got to a texture of butter that had been left out for a while, which is actually what we are going for. More importantly, it stops them from overcooking. Now, come to serve. I want to see nice, light, fluffy scrambled eggs. A little bit creamy for scrambled eggs to die for. I wouldn't necessarily say I would die for my scrambled eggs, but I would definitely give up soda for them. They did end up light and fluffy, and about as great as I could hope for for only my second attempt. And then finally, finish the little smidgen of chopped chives on the top. I couldn't find my kitchen shears, so I just had to prep my chives the old fashioned way closing my eyes and then slicing and dicing until the chives submitted to my will. I then sprinkled them onto my eggs and marveled at what I just accomplished. And that's how a master chef perfects scrambled eggs. Woo! Beautiful chef. And that's how a YouTube chef makes perfect scrambled eggs. Pretty happy with how it all turned out. Maybe could have gotten a better consistency, a little bit more creamy, but all things considered, I'd say there isn't anything I could really beat myself up over. I'm going to take a bite. Bottoms up. Honestly, pretty fantastic. Thanks for feasting with me today, and please subscribe if you liked what you saw.